up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again coming at you on January 6th with another mining rig build. Today we're going to be building a GTX 1063 gig Raven coin miner because, well, we have 1063 gigs and it seems like a good idea. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a good day. It's pretty wild out there. Stay safe. Without further ado, let's talk about parts. For this build, it's going to be the colorful H81A-BTC version 2.0. We have an Intel Celeron G1820 going in there, the good old gold. And we have 4 gigabytes of DDR3 that came out of something from somewhere that ended up in my memory bin. And uh, so we're using it. Now that is a good point though. So for Ethereum, I would like to bring up that for even Hive OS, eight gigs of RAM resolves a ton of issues on Linux. Uh, additionally, um, for Ravencoin, that's not necessary, right? And that's because Ravencoin doesn't have, you know, as large of a DAG. So for whatever reason, you know, Ethereum, even though technically you should be able to like do some special settings and edit, you know, your OS settings to go ahead and mine with only four gigabytes of system memory, not to be confused with video memory, it's much easier to just go with eight. However, once you're on Ravencoin and you know, the DAG is significantly lower, which is like around three gigs, somewhere around there, you know, a little under three gigs then you know of course I, I four gigs of system memory is fine and this is a discussion that that we've had plenty of times and it's always changing you're gonna have to keep up with it a little bit yourself so if you're watching this in the future and raven coins dag is now eight gigs well these gpus won't work and the amount of system memory won't work but for 2020 right now it's perfectly fine. We are going to be installing Hive OS, so we will be using a 32 gigabyte USB stick, uh, and that's going to be USB 3.0. And you can just pick these up anywhere, Best Buy, whatever. I got a bunch of them for like $4 a pop during Black Friday from Best Buy. Always look for those deals. And if you're starting a mining farm or even considering starting a mining farm, if you see some really good deals on USB drives, just go pick them all up. You know what I mean? You'll have them and you'll be happy you did. They can also be used for a multitude of other purposes like encrypting them and storing some keys on them. High, other Hive OS installs, of course, Windows installs, Linux installs. They're fantastic. Just go get them. Look, I just, well, I just keep them all here. I got tons. I usually have like one, like this one, it has a bunch of BIOS on it. And this one actually boots to DOS if I mess up a GPU flash and I need to reflash it, that sort of thing. Just always have some extras, it's super helpful. The power supply actually came from a coworker. It's a 2000 watt, 220 volt only BTC PSU. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video as far as like power and power for a farm and what's more efficient, so on and so forth. We have six GTX 1063 gigabytes. And as we, as we stated in the beginning, these are gonna be used to mine Ravencoin. We have six risers, of course. Now these risers have the PCIe power adapter but you can also use uh, the six pin PCIe plug directly into it. So it does go PCIe to SATA or you can remove that little extension and just go straight with the six pin. Now for a 1063 gig rig, you can go ahead and use that PCI extension because you aren't gonna be pulling enough off the PCI rail to really burn those up. That being said, of course, you don't wanna be running like four of them on one cable, right? I'd recommend a max with the 1063 gigs of two without having issues. And then if you're bumping up to different GPUs, especially like the 5700s and the 5700 XTs, well, uh, I would just recommend using as much of the six pin PCIe powers that you have available and keeping the SATA powers to a minimum. Bitsby Trippin has most of the numbers on this that will give you a better idea. The recommendation, I think for the 5700s is one. 
a SATA extension per cable. So if you have one SATA extension cable coming off of your power supply and it has multiple SATA connectors on it, you only want to use one. Uh, for the 1063 gigs, two is going to be sufficient. You shouldn't really overload it at that point. Now we have the Spartan mining frame. These frames can still be purchased on Amazon and Newegg. I'll have links down in the description for all the parts, of course, too. They will be affiliate links, so any purchases uh, will help me out there. There are better mining frames, but there are not more cost efficient frames pre-built. So I highly recommend it. I think it's great. You can learn how to construct it or put it together, of course, in the video that I'll link up in the top here as well as down in the description. And then like we stated, we're using Hive OS. I really like Hive OS. I've been using Hive OS for years now, since 2017, 2016, 2017. So four or five years going on now using Hive. And they have a lot of great features. They support a lot of coins, a lot of miners. They don't support everything though. However, if you do uh, have any sort of technical knowledge, it's pretty easy to custom configure the miner batch file. Well, in this case, not necessarily a batch file, but the miner start config you can go ahead and configure manually if there's a coin that you want to mine that's not in there as well as configure the wallets we can talk about that in a different video if that's something you find helpful let me know in the comment section below and specifically the miner we're going to be using here is going to be the t-rex miner for ravencoin and i find that to be super efficient and reliable these rigs are the rigs that I've had using T-Rex Miner on Hive OS have been 24 seven stable with Nvidia cards. It's amazing. I'm just going to keep running it. So moving on, as we stated, frame assembly. So this frame is super simple to put together. There's very few screws. You'll get it going. The only recommendation I really have is putting the two sides on and then putting the motherboard on before putting the GPU uh, brace in there. And that's going to be just because it's easier to do, right? So I've had a lot of issues when I first bought one and put it all together per the instructions and then was like, I can't get my motherboard in there. So, you know, just things you learn. If you want to see the full assembly process, check out the review of the mining rig frame. Now, motherboard settings. Okay, so let's just say we've gotten everything built. We finally got the power supply mounted in like we just did in that video that maybe you paused and went to watch real quick. And we got the power supplies in, we got the GPUs mounted, we got sufficient power to all the GPUs, and now we need to get the rig up and running. Well, here's a few notes that you want to make we are using the colorful h81a btc version 2.0 this is because we got them on sale once again i'm always looking for sales for like 35 bucks a piece so we have a bunch of them they only support six gpus and those six gpus are only supported if you are very very cognizant of the bios settings and and that's because it comes booted with certain settings that make it pretty much impossible to run more than like four or five gpus on we're gonna go over those now because we haven't even done a review video for this motherboard yet and then we'll try to get a review of this motherboard out for you guys let me know in the comment section below if you're interested in that so to get these up and running, we had to set the video to legacy under the CSM boot properties menu first. Then you need to save and reboot. Once you've done that, you can go back into the CSM boot settings and turn it off. You want to disable CSM boot. And this is going to be basically because your above 4G decoding doesn't work if CSM is on. This is something that we've talked about in videos for getting smart access memory functioning, right? On gaming PCs, similar thing, same idea. However, there is no above 4G decoding option on the motherboard, which can be confusing. Don't worry, disabling this resolves that. You won't have an option still, but it will be enabled and you'll start getting all six GPUs very funky very very confusing and I can understand why it has a lot of bad reviews unless you are already putting those two and two that two and two together you you you'll never figure it out the next thing is I always set the AC power to start on power loss and this is so if I'm at work 
rig goes down, but it still has power, it'll just restart itself. Very important setting, especially if you're working in farms or trying to build yourself a farm that is 24 seven stable. You never know what might go wrong. So you need to make sure that it's gonna reboot when you're not around the house. You don't wanna be like, I gotta go on lunch break again. My rig went down, run over there and get, it's terrible, don't do that, it's awful. Just make sure you get that setting done. Now, finally, some of these motherboards were not coming with the latest BIOS. So you may need to update the BIOS to really get all the GPUs working. Where this is really concerning is that it's not a straightforward process. So there's no BIOS update utility in the UFI, right? You can't go in there and say, you know, update and then select it. Uh, what that means is that you actually have to create a bootable drive. So when you download the driver package off the colorful website, it's gonna come with a batch file and then it's gonna come with the BIOS. That batch file is what will flash the new BIOS onto the colorful motherboard, okay? To get to that, you're gonna need to use something like Rufus to flash a USB drive to a bootable DOS drive. We'll go over that in another tutorial. If you're interested and that sounds helpful, let me know down in the comments. Once again, we don't have time to go over it quite all the way here because this is more about the build of the, the rig, but it's something to note. These colorful motherboards have a lot of little weird things that you need to get sorted out. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them, but at $35, you know I'm gonna go ahead and pick them up because it's all about that ROI. So moving on, we need to configure Hive OS. Now we need to install it to a USB drive. And then once again, I'm going to point you to the top corner. You're gonna click that video. You're gonna check out my video on how to build a milk crate mining rig. And that entire how-to covers literally the entire process from start to finish of assembly with the milk crate, assembly of the CPU and the memory into the motherboard, as well as the full guide on the Hive OS tutorial. I'll also leave a link down in the description with my referral to Hive OS. If you click that, that would be super helpful for me. If you're gonna go ahead and go ahead with uh, Hive OS. Next, let's get into the fun part. Ignore the fact that we're testing out some hive on over here. We are mining hive on Ethereum and we're really gonna be focusing on this page. So this is the hive OS farm, uh, or sorry, <laughs> hive OS farm. This is the, I call it SOAT beta. This is the GTX 1063 gig rig here. And we're gonna kind of go over a couple settings that you need to get tweaked to make sure that you have basically your flight sheet ready and everything for, of course, Ravencoin as opposed to ETH. So if you go to your home page and then you click your wallets tab, you're gonna be able to come into your wallets tab and basically add a new wallet, right? But in this particular case, this would be for all of your wallets. I created one under the farm, so you can do it either way. You can click into the farm and create the wallet, or you can click into the wallets and create it as an owner account. Either way, it's pretty simple. You're gonna come in, click your wallet, click add wallet. You're gonna select the coin and type in RVN right? And then you're going to type in your wallet address. Now for the wallet address, go check out my how to mine Ravencoin on Windows 10 video. In that video, we go over the entire wallet install for Raven Core, as well as your options, of course, for exchanges. So if you're interested in mining Raven, I highly recommend that video. And that once again, will be linked up there. So once you have your wallet in, it's good to go. You're gonna name it, you're gonna put your address there, you're gonna click create. Next thing you need to do is go to the flight sheets tab and create the flight sheet. Now for the flight sheet, you will select your coin, which will be Raven. Then you'll select the wallet you created. Now, currently, I don't have a wallet in this particular uh, owner portal, but it's in the farm portal. And then you'll select the pool. Now, it does look like it's gonna make me add a wallet, doesn't it? So let's just go get a Ravencoin address. All right, so to continue with this, we are just gonna go ahead and 
do a Ravencoin donation address and click create. So now we have the wallet selected in the flight sheet. Now we can select the pool. I'm gonna recommend two miners. And then you're gonna select the closest location to yourself. Don't do solo unless you have a significant amount of hash rate. And I'm actually not even sure what that is on Ravencoin. So let me know what you guys have found for solo mining. And we can go over solo mining versus pool mining in a different video. If that needs to be completely separate uh, video, discussion let me know if that would be helpful as well in the comment section below but you're just going to hit us for us we're going to click apply sometimes it'll do this i don't know why but there we go and then we got the pool in there then we're going to come over to the miner and the miner we're using like i stated is going to be the t-rex miner and then we'll just name it like T-Rex donation, right? And click create the flight sheet. So now we have the flight sheet. We can go back to the rig and then you would just hit the flight sheet and then boom, right there. You can edit it and select the flight sheet you want. Once it starts mining, you'll be good to go. It'll be awesome. So for overclocks and all that sort of thing on the 1063 gigs, I have not tweaked them all the way yet. This is what I found. I've been mining Raven for a while. I've been pretty happy with the settings. Uh, we went ahead and all of the cards have the fan at 100% and the power limit at 90 watts. Going below 90 watts to about 80 watts works on some cards and really affects other cards pretty heavily. So we're across the board uh, set for that, right? And what that results in is around nine mega hash a second on the Kapow algorithm at about, well, 90 watts. So there you go, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? And then that means that the entire rig in this particular case, right, is going to be around 54 mega hash a second. So if we head on over to what to mine and we go ahead and go to Kapow and add in 54 mega hash, we're gonna unselect everything else. Oh, and power's 800 watts. We've talked about this before as well. At the wall is 800 watts. And that video has been done too on the R1063 gigs, still worth mining on in 2020. Now it's 2021, it's a little bit more profitable, right? So we did this wrong, Kapow, 800 mega hash. I wish, that would be awesome. 54 mega hash at 800 watts. We're gonna go ahead and calculate that out. And you'll see here that it's about $1.81 a day after power, 373 a day revenue. And that's with a 10 cents uh, a kilowatt hour, right? So for the US guys, that is US dollar. That is my new Ravencoin mining rig. Is it profitable? Yes. Is it really demanding on power? Yes. You know, half the profits on this rig are pretty much gonna go to the power bill. So, you know, it is what it is. If you wanna mine Ravencoin, you have some 1063 gigs, I'd recommend it. It is currently on a pump right now, and it does offer, you know, an alternative to Ethereum. It is closer to Bitcoin as far as, I guess, its ethics with no pre-mine, no pre-sale, that sort of stuff, right? So it does have what I would call an ethically and morally superior uh, <laughs> ideal behind it than maybe some other coins out there that does mean it's going to be slower the first halving isn't going to be until 2022 i believe it's going to be around january of 2022 so you really do still have about a whole year before that reward that block reward gets cut in half too and presumably in most cases after a halving that profit well or that price will go up right so it's probably best to go ahead and you know maybe hedge mine it that's what i'm going to be doing playing on it with like you know the 1063 gigs the 1050 ti's that sort of thing especially at a time right now when gpus are hard to get hold of speaking of the 1063 gig you can pick them up for about 250 right now that's still expensive but they are in stock and uh previously you could get them for quite a bit less maybe about 75 bucks a pop so keep that in mind but it is an option if you want to get into mining and you want to just do a little bit of hobby mining it's something to check out especially with of course 
where I can see Ravencoin going to in the future. Once again, this is not financial advice. If you found the video helpful at all, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Check out all the in-depth how-tos and tutorials on the channel and stop in the Discord if you have any additional questions. I'll see you next Tuesday.